Ethereum breaks into 3,000 and starts a trend in a way that maybe this is going to be the thing we're watching for and have been waiting for all along. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. We'll be breaking into Ethereum and some of the charts today. Also, maybe some of the narrative of how Ethereum is going to be going. I want to, of course, thank our sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital. If you're looking at going into crypto IRAs, this is one of the best places to take a look. And there's some things you can do over there. You can get your Ethereum over there, your Bitcoin. You can also do precious metals, altcoins, all of that self-directed in your own crypto IRA account. Very easy to do and set up with no monthly fees. All you have to do is click the link down below and start up. It'll give you a $100 funding reward if you decide to go in that direction. All right, a couple of news points right here. Of course, ETH hits 3,000 for the first time since 2022, which is pretty uh, significant. And of course, a lot of people have been looking at the spot ETF as maybe a precursor to an ETH run. I don't necessarily think that we're going to need that to see Ethereum run, obviously because of its relationship right now still to Bitcoin. But at the same time, there's a lot happening in terms of just where are the current trends. One of the current trends is whales are accumulating. Right now you can see another 178 million moving into ETH just in uh, the last couple of weeks. I think we're starting to see more and more people uh, understand what the, the power of this altcoin is, if we even wanna call it an altcoin. And I think it's also starting to show some very significant signs toward finally an uptrend in the market when you look at the charts. We'll look at that in a second. But I do want to get to a clip because it starts to get into an alignment of where the narrative is going. Let's go over and jump into this first clip. Listen in. So I think what has typically happened is as you see a swelling in Bitcoin, uh, the grandfather of cryptos, it sort of spills over into the other assets. And so just just what happens is you're making profits in Bitcoin. You start to redeploy them into riskier assets. Uh, yeah. And some of those assets are really not that risky relative to Bitcoin. As an example, Ethereum and Solana are probably now in that big boys club. I like it when uh, ETH and Sol are considered similar in the big boys club. So that's a good statement, I think, for sure. Question is whether or not the ETF is going to happen. I think still a lot of people, we track this in terms of sentiment. One thing we have noticed around sentiment on the ETH ETF possibility is it has started to wane slightly. And I think this may be contributed to a lot of analysts looking at the potential here. I wanna to go to this clip also with Scaramucci talking about whether or not the ETF for Ethereum could happen. Listen in. So what, what I would say is that he's up against it because he's lost several cases. Uh, he will but would probably- Would it take another lawsuit to get there? I think he will. I think he will. I think he's decided that the powers that be politically uh, in the elite don't like crypto. They don't like the uh, energy around Bitcoin. And I don't think they want an ETF for Ethereum. And so that May decision, I think, gets pushed. I think it causes another lawsuit. He'll likely lose that lawsuit. Uh, and then you're coming up against the election. And so then the real question is, will Mr. Gensler in a new Joe Biden administration, will he be the SEC chairman? My, my guess is he probably won't be at that point. All right, so a couple of things to look at here. Of course, you can kind of see the chart on Ethereum moving up really since around the 5th of February, which is where we had that sideways action. A little bit of growth here, pretty significant with the current trend line at about almost 30%. So a nice move on Ethereum as it goes. Now the question is, is the 3K mark going to hold? Do we get a chance for a retest? Now there's two things that I'm watching right now, actually within our own market sentiment, I'll zoom in on this right here. Top line, and this is as of today, top line still trending up, but the amplification is starting to trend down. And I don't necessarily like that when I see a split in an asset like this, simply meaning there's some conf conflict in the overall sentiment of what's happening with Ethereum, likelihood is we're probably going to see a little bit of a retracement. I don't know if that means back down to 2800, but right now it is going to get interesting uh, for Ethereum. All right, so we're going to get into Bitcoin a little bit, uh, break that down before we head that way. Make sure if you guys are looking at a self-custody, one of the best ways to do that is with Tangem. All you have to do is jump over to the Tangem website, tangem.com. Click on that blue button there and make sure and get the three card set. That's the one of the best ways to do and start your self-custody journey. Check it out. Use our code, of course, does help the channel out. Moving on to Bitcoin here. Last time we saw Bitcoin at 50K, uh, Google search trends uh, was about uh, 90. So pretty significant. And today, Bitcoin is ripping through 52K. In fact, we saw a 53K hit for just a second. 
search trends are now below 20. So what that simply means, I'll kind of expand that out there so you guys can kind of see this. This is when we saw the last 52K number. This is where we are now. And if you think about Google search trends, typically that means retail. Retail is interested in Bitcoin. Obviously, we've already seen traditional investors showing tremendous interest in Bitcoin. But I think the key here is going forward on whether or not we can see uh, big retail starting to move in. And that's not necessarily been the case uh, for a while. Okay, just to give you some other in insights on Bitcoin right here, fastest uh, asset to reach the trillion dollar mark in 12 years. Uh, this is faster than Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google. Bitcoin hits it in 12 years. Pretty significant, really, if you think about it. This is something that we've talked about, you know, very slowly at first and all at once. And I think that is going to be one of the key things here with crypto in general. Uh, and obviously, Bitcoin will continue to lead the way. Here is Michael Saylor going a little deeper on Bitcoin ETFs and maybe his process on how he's taking the trends going forward. Listen in. And from the new Bitcoin ETFs, uh, it's at least 10 times as much <laughs> as the number of new tokens that are actually being minted by those miners. So really interesting supply demand dynamics going on there. But let's talk about your existing holdings. As I mentioned in the intro, now worth around $10 billion. You have paper gains of about 70% or so, which a lot of people uh, would like to see that sort of return. At any point, would you sell? When would it make sense to take profits there? Well, I, I famously said I'm going to be buying the top forever. Uh, Bitcoin is is the exit strategy. It, it is the, the uh, strongest asset. So what we see right now is that Bitcoin has just emerged as a trillion dollar asset class. And it's alongside uh, names like Apple and Google and Microsoft. But the difference between Bitcoin and the Magnificent Seven is Bitcoin's an asset class. It's not a company. There's not a lot, enough room in the capital structure of those companies to hold 10 trillion or 100 trillion dollars worth of capital. So Bitcoin's competing against gold, which is 10x what it is right now. It's competing against the S&P index. It's competing against real estate, a hundred trillion dollar plus asset class as a store of value. So we believe capital is going to keep flowing from those asset classes into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is technically superior to those asset classes. And that, that being the case, there's just no reason to sell the winner to buy the loser. To buy the loser. I like that. I like that statement, to buy the loser. And I think, you know, you know, we've talked about and we've had Michael on before, and there is no bigger advocate for Bitcoin, obviously, than Michael Saylor. So interesting uh, times ahead. I think the key here is going to be whether or not we see the Bitcoin price actually accelerate beyond its all-time high and whether or not that will hit in 2024. Here's Anthony Scaramucci talking about the Bitcoin price and where it may be going. Listen in. Because, of course, you made a lot of headlines when you gave a Bitcoin price forecast of $170,000 about 18 months after the halving in April. Um, given the rally that we've seen, 52000 um, above that level, what's your latest price forecast? Are you sticking with that? I, I am sticking with that only because I think it's conservative based on where we are right now. But I think people need to understand, look at what happened in NVIDIA, look at what happened to Apple over the last decade. NVIDIA over the last 18 months. It's not impossible now that this asset has been regulated mm -hmm. and has this regulatory ETF wrapper around it. Yeah. And remember, you know, I've been on but, Wall Street. This is my 36th year on Wall Street. Wall Street sells product. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, these products are sold and not bought. And you have armies of people now yeah. that are putting these products in people's portfolios. Yeah. And it's very limited demand for an asset like Bitcoin. I think the cool thing here is that maybe Bitcoin becomes one of the magnificent seven in a way of its own trade capacity, but really around the growth of what the ETF has started to push into the market, meaning that when you're a family office, uh, high net worth individuals, or you're, you know, investment class uh, investors, what are you doing in terms of the percentage of your current capital structure and in moving into crypto assets? Is Ethereum on the plate? Obviously, Bitcoin is already on the plate because of the ETFs. And I think that we're going to only continue to see this to grow. And just like we showed earlier, the chart in which all of this is accelerating, this is still very early in the market. And we're also still facing some questionable times ahead. So it's not necessarily a slam dunk. Other things that we watch for here, of course, is the altcoins. And if you look at altcoin trends, one thing you always look at is this right here, Tether. Tether is one of the biggest uh, scenarios that plays out within the altcoin market. 
if Tether is moving and Tether is uh, accumulating in terms of assets, that usually means we've got some activity starting to move towards altcoins. And with that, there's some very interesting things here. This tweet right here, market cap currently expansion phase, leading to an alt season. And remember that all seasons typically happen after we see all-time highs hit with Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. And then investors looking for that short squeeze on additional, uh, I think, additional projects out there going in and, and looking for those kind of gains after they win in some of the bigger uh, token markets. But we're very early, very, very early in terms of these. However, I do see a lot of projects that are starting to hit the markets. We're seeing some slight, you know, two, three, five X gains already starting to show up, which is usually early signs of what the, when the altcoin market is really starting to heat up. One other thing I wanted to kind of hit on right here, Bitcoin traders are now avoiding substantial short positions, which I think only um, kind of repositions the entire market as a long trend. And that's the real question here. Can we move past the 53K mark and on our way to a $55,000 Bitcoin? And is 3K going to be something that we can potentially start to move past on for Ethereum. Remember, ETH is now moving into the zone of its all-time high. So, and it really hasn't had significant upside yet. So there's still a lot to uh, play out on this. And happening, of course, I think will still play into this. So definitely uh, some things to watch for sure. If you guys are not in the diamond circle, make sure and jump in right now. It's one of the best places to get additional content. We also do some of our own portfolios over there for our mastermind group which is the kind of alt projects that we're buying, some of the things that I'm investing in. All of that you can catch in there in the Diamond Circle. All you have to do is click the link down below. And of course, catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.